So this is a seedling of Wolfenii, of Euphorbia Wolfenii. Um, it's probably around two foot, two and a half foot tall at the moment, and it's absolutely covered in flowers. And the time to take cuttings from Euphorbias uh, of this particular type are uh, sort of any time from mid-April through to uh, end of May, really. And you get away with it. So what I'll show you is where to take them from and how to take them. One thing I'm going to have to tell you is you really should be wearing things like that, the gloves. I'm going to wear them today simply because, as usual, there's nobody to help me and I will definitely cut into the sap and I'm going to be taking quite a few. So I've, I'm put the, I've put the one on. I'm only going to use the one. I'm holding the uh, camera with me other. So, <clears throat> where do we take them from? Well, firstly, sort out whereabouts you're going to take them from. And you probably find that you've got this type of thing growing. This is one here, a non-flowering one, which would be fine. Uh, the little ones may be a little bit small, those ones, but they would they would take as well. Um, I'm just trying to look for the best ones. I think I'm going to go with the bigger ones in this case. I've taken them plenty of times before. Uh, now, what I'll, I'll suggest to you is you're going to take the smaller ones and cut down as low as you can to the base. We'll take a couple of those as well, so we've taken two off straight away. There you go. That's two there. That's why we wear gloves. That's sap. As you can see, it's very, uh, very sappy. It's called the milkweed for a very good reason. So there's two little ones. I'm going to go back in and I'm actually going to take, I'm going to take a maximum of five of these because, you know, you've got to remember, you've got to look after these things. And if you're already growing loads of other, other plants, then it can become a problem very fast. Now, what I'll do, I'll take them really low down. One to be careful not to snip off the flowering ones here we go so that's two i want five quite bigger ones i'm gonna i'm gonna experiment with the small ones as well if you can try and pick a around the shrub if you're gonna if you intend keeping the shrub exactly where it is then you don't want it to be obvious that you've uh, taken these cuttings and there's plenty of cuttings here so i'm gonna get quite a few out of it so again i'm going quite low down I'm looking for a good, strong cutting. Uh, I really ought to get somebody to film these, didn't I? It doesn't help. So here we go. Here's a good, strong cutting again. I'll take that one as well. Uh, do, do, do. It, it doesn't really matter at this point how far down you go, as long as you've got uh, a fairly sturdy plant or cutting. So they look quite good. I want one more. I'll, uh, I, oh, look at this. We've got a little bit of green fly going on in here. We'll get rid of that. That's early. Uh, we'll avoid that one. Right, I want a good, strong, sturdy one here. Oh, there's my fifth one. I know I've got the two little ones, but uh, it'll be fine. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to experiment with the both so I can show you both of them. So there you go. I've taken cuttings of about a foot and a half there, I should say they are. But what we really want is we only need them at about uh, four to six inches. They don't need to be any bigger than that. So without the aid of somebody else, I will uh, try and set up this tripod. Uh, and we'll, we'll see what we can get here. I've come into the greenhouse now to do this, into the pot inside of it. Um, it'll be a lot easier to demonstrate in here. Now, what you're looking for is something about four to six inches long. Don't worry if it's uh, if it's shorter or if it's longer than that. It should should not be a problem for you. Um, but you do want that good sturdy cutting, which I've got here. So what you need to do is kind of guesstimate how big the size is. Now I'm going to use. I'm quite lucky here. I've got this. Uh, I've got these quite big plant labels and, and that's a good guide for me. So I would actually gauge it at about that. So to the bottom of that. So I've, you know, where the leaves have stopped growing really. All you do, don't worry about where you take the cutting. You don't need to worry about taking it underneath a leaf node. It's, it's not appropriate in this uh, situation. You'll clip it 
uh, just clip it like that so that's taking it straight off what we'll what we've removed is this section here don't bother with that you're not going to grow from that throw it away strip the leaves now as you can see uh, this is well you can't see at the minute I'm going to show you now look this is starting to drip the milkweed I'll just tap it see if you can see it Typical, not wanting to come off, but anyway, <laughs> I'll be all right. Right, so what we do is we strip these leaves off completely. Don't worry about being too careful with them. It's, it's not needed. Don't worry about it. If you're a novice, have never done this before, this is a good one to, to try, these particular varieties. Uh, I'll remove quite a lot of these because what you don't want is you don't want all these leaves because what all that they do is they, they require water and, and the plant's got to supply its uh, supply these leaves with water that it doesn't want. It wants to produce lots of roots. So I've removed loads of them right up the stem. Do we want to take any more? Uh, I'm just checking now to make sure because this feels quite chunky in the centre there. It could be trying to produce flower it's a little bit late but sometimes they do uh, now it's fine so it's got quite a lot of leaf in there and and based on that i'd be happy to take off either take off either more of the leaves which i'm gonna do remove more um in this case i feel that that's still a little bit long so i'm going to just reduce it i'm sure these are six inches but i'd rather go down to the four so we're just again simply snipping off and we've got that. That's exactly what we're looking for. Right, let's do another one. So again, we've got a good cluster of leaves. We've got all that. Take off. I'm gonna I'm gonna measure it with the the one I've just taken. So that shows you roughly. We'll take that cut in there. So again, we will cut it straight off, throw away the old bit, don't need it. Be careful not to get that sap on you. It really is a stinger, it'll sting you. If you're not used to it, you'll have red, uh, a red reaction on your skin against it, and, and you don't want that. If you get it in your eyes, it's definitely a visit to A&E, so don't do it. Be careful when you're doing this in the sunshine as well, because that intensifies it. It intensifies the sap, and it, and it really will sting if you're not used to it. And it'll make your red a little bit, uh, your skin a little bit angry, a little bit red. Right, so I'm removing loads of them. Again, I'd be quite happy with that. That would do me. Right, go into the little ones now. Look, there's a little one. So we're going to try the experiment again. Once these have taken, at another time, I'll show you again to see how successful they all were. So again, roughly four to six inches in this case i'm going for four in actual fact that one's three won't matter too much as i said earlier don't worry too much about it strip the leaves off do, do, do. sing a little song while you're doing it always helps so there you go so there's the smaller one show you that at a distance there you go. So we've put them into that compost. Just stand them up and show you. So there's to show you the comparison. So all I've used, secateurs, gloves, crucial. And then you need a pot, really, that's uh, big enough to take all the plants. And in this case, I will use, let me just find one. I've several in here. We've got a uh, two litre pot here. We'll show you that size. This is the common size that you'll buy in garden centres, two litre. I always save them. In this case, I've saved it. Um, and I shall set about prepping the rest. And then I shall show you potting it up. Any ordinary compost will do to put this into. Um, this is just a standard mix that you buy from the garden centres. It doesn't really need anything special but i like to mix up my own so i'm gonna add some grit into this i'll show you that so we're putting grit onto that a couple of handfuls of grit we'll mix it in so we get a free draining mix uh, the more grit you put in the more free draining it becomes but it's not crucial the the standard um 
potting compost will do i just always do this i put all my plants in this type of mix now if i was planting on a plant i would add some feed into this even though most compost now have a six to eight week feed in them um that, that's not required for this it's you just want some basic uh, potting compost and the roots should form off of that so what we do is we get a pot pop it in straight in and into that pot so like i said a two liter pot oh before i forget uh, make sure that once you've uh, well before and after make sure that you clean your secateurs they will contain that sap you don't want to be transferring it onto all the leaves uh, try not to compact your soil down that's as much as it needs i'll put a bit more on there because it will it will drop that compost it's quite annoying when it does because you've got to top it up when you don't want to. Right, so just shake it about and that's the compost ready. Nothing more than that. That's all it needs. Okay, so all we do now is get that plant, put it further away. There you go. That size there. And we simply slide it in to the compost. Virtually down to the, uh, to the leaves. Now, what I shall do, help myself out here if I can find my stick. Uh, no, can't find it. <laughs> Should have been more prepared. Stick your finger in, get that down there as far as you can. Uh, it all helps, and as far as you can. Now, the reason that we put them towards the edges, some people say it's because it contains more moisture there, which uh, it's not, that's not true. I don't know why people think that there's more moisture there than there is in here. The reason that we do that is because the sides of it are a lot warmer. So if we've got these stuck at the back and, and it's getting any modicum of sun at all, the heat from that transfers into the pot and the heat makes the roots produce a bit quicker. So that's the real reason that we actually uh, we actually do that. Now, here's the stick I was looking for. It's just a... Big stick, really. I don't know what it was used for. All you want to do is create yourself a, a, a little hole there. I'll show you that. So I'm just creating that hole down the side. And that just makes it easier to put the plant itself in. You can see, look, you can see all that sap. Another reason for wearing gloves. I'm used to doing these cuttings, and to be quite honest, I'm only wearing it for the purpose of this. Usually I wouldn't bother. Um... I'll just wash my hands as soon as I finish. So again, we pop it in. Stick's not got done its job far enough down. There we go. That's better. That's better. And again, just shake it in. Uh, if the if the plant is strong enough, it's another reason for not compacting your soil is to be able to push that straight in. But um, obviously, soil compacts itself, and and it's fairly difficult to get these things in. So so again, there you go. Round the side. We'll keep putting them round. Now, in this case, I've got five to put in. I would have been quite happy with just five, but I've taken those two little cuttings as well. So we'll put them in. Get the stick in there. Get that in. Be mindful that this is actually going to the bottom of the compost as well, to the bottom of the pot. Um, third one, fifth one rather, in here. And then we've got... After this, we've got the uh, we've got the tiny little ones. Let me show you those. Let's get that out of the way. So there is the tiny one in comparison to the big ones. No, it doesn't really make a difference. Not in my experience. They've always been successful. So I'm going to aim for the middle ones for this, for these little ones. Then I can keep my eye on them because it's just uh, just out of interest, really. For doing this now once you've done that water it in well stand it out of the way of direct sunlight we'll remove a couple more those leaves are a bit close remove those uh, the, what the most important thing you must do and don't ever forget this and don't think you'll remember because believe me you won't um, the most important thing to do is write your labels. Never forget to write your labels up. The other thing is, don't lose your pencil. <laughs> I've lost my pencil. Typical. Uh, oh, here it is. Right, never, 
never lose your labels. The other tip I'm going to give you is do not bother buying specialist pens for writing your plant labels. I use these six inch plant labels, which are fine. I use them this size because it's so much easier to get your information on if you're not sure. But don't ever forget to put a label in. I'm going to be taking about three other varieties today. This is just a standard wolf any eye. Uh, it's Karakia subspecies well, wolf any eye, so it's a smaller type. So what I shall write on here, I won't be bothered with all that uh, information because it's not needed. What I'm going to do is, you'll not be able to see me writing this, but I'll show you in a minute. So I will simply put on it Euphorbia. Uh, and I'll put wolf any eye on it. I'm giving myself as much information as I can. Because, believe me, in the future, you'll need it. And then I'll put the date. So today it is the 2nd of May. So it's 02, 5, 2022. On the back, so I've written that on the front. I don't know if that's... There you go, that's zooming in, that's pretty straight there. That's zooming in. So that's the information you need. Now on the back, because I don't know which, um, what variety it's from, because it is simply a seedling, I will put uh, a cutting from seedling. Cutting from seedling. And I know it, it seems a bit fiddly, but it's worth doing this. And I will put it, I will put where it was picked up from. And on it, and this particular case, I shall write on it Stoke Grange because this is the house it came from. I selected two, three actually, three different plants. The best of the three actually died. Uh, but this is what happened. So we, we're working with this. Now, I'm not really fussed about this one. The plant I've taken it from will last about four to five years where it is and it'll be removed. But I've written enough information on it now to be able to remember what it is and where it was from um so there you go look euphobia wolf any eye the date very important now the next one i shall be taking will be uh one called black pearl now next to the wolf any eye i would just simply write black pearl so i know what type it is it wouldn't require any information on the back don't ever think you can get away without this ever because you won't um sometimes i even put two labels in because pigeons uh, uh, tend to take them out uh, a couple at least you stand a chance but uh, that will now be watered in well and it will be stood at the back of the greenhouse not in the greenhouse outside the greenhouse but where it's more shady within six weeks that should be producing roots at that point i will pop them on i shall show you uh, another cutting i took last year to show you what will happen within uh, a year what what the you expect to see from it so these cuttings were taken last year um and they're from uh, my own particular one they're, they're well rooted let me have a look at the bottom they're not through yet because i potted these up very early this year so they're well rooted and again what i've done is i've written on them Euphorbia caracias wolf any i didn't need to put the cariacius um wolf any i would simply have done and it's got Malachi on it. Nothing on the back. I usually write the dates. There's probably a date on one of them, but I usually write the dates. So they were struck this time last year. Uh, I actually had six of those. I've gave two away. I try not to give this one away. It's a little bit special. Uh, but I'm going to take some more today. And that's what they should look like in about a year's time, once you've potted them on. Uh, be careful how quickly you pot them on just wait for those roots to appear at the bottom of the pot and then it should be fine i hope that uh, that's given you a little bit more in, on the insight in them other euphobias require different ways of um, propagation of which i'll go into at another time but that's the euphobia wolf species